but we ended up running into our good friend, our new friend, Happy. Well, we didn't run into her. She generously, no, let's shout her out. Right, and if, if she doesn't want us to, we'll bleep it out. Yeah. But um, she generously offered to come and collect us. We had no expectation. Mm -hmm. And it was so nice to be greeted by someone at the airport, first time in this country, and such a warm hug, such a warm embrace, so much love. Um, and a fellow Eritrean. And a fellow Eritrean, which we met thanks to the Eritrea vlog series. She yes. reached out to us, we connected, we had an initial chat over the spring, um, which was over an hour long, a FaceTime, all of us, yeah. and she kind of talked us into, not talked, she, she, no. she invited she, us yeah. to come to Rwanda, and he took the bait, <laughs> and he's she like, said, sure, we'll Hey, come. check this out, y'all should come here, <laughs> check yeah. it out, and I was like, that is what we're gonna do. Because she's a Californian, if we he's can. a Californian, so yeah. I guess they bonded on that. The next thing you know, Ishe booked us a trip to Rwanda, and for which I'm so grateful. Yeah. I really trust my senses, catch me if I fall. So done with second guessing, you seem to have it all. In loving the for anything, emotional too soon. You got my invitation, now the rest is up to you. Discussing, uh, you know, logistics for tomorrow. I'm trying to convince him that we need an extra half hour's rest. Um, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we're always on time, and I'm like, that's late. <laughs> the military background in it. Not used to being on time. On time. Anything. You gotta be there, sitting there. I don't care if I have to wait. I just, I'm there first. Yeah, so. Know. All right, so what, what are we recapping? We are recapping our day six, which was our um, departure day, basically from Kenya, and our travel day to Rwanda. It was a long day, but all in all, it was uh, fairly smooth, right? Very it was smooth, fairly smooth, yeah. Very smooth, really. I don't think we had any hiccups, but let's start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the beginning, um, I can't even remember today. What did we do? What did we do? We had our that delicious was breakfast. Wednesday. Yesterday was Wednesday. Um, yesterday was Wednesday. And what we did is we actually got up early. <clears throat> we got up at 6. Um, yesterday? Mm -hmm. 6 or 6.30 we were up. Um, oh, we were back in Kenya. Dang. Oh my gosh, guys. Actually, we did get up at 6 because we both went to work out. I did yoga. We yeah. went to the gym went to between the gym. 6 and 7. Then we met up. Um, and because we got up early to work out, which was a great idea, by the way, mm -hmm. on a travel day when you know you're going to be in, in a fuselage and at the airport all day, the best thing you can do is give yourself a gentle workout. <gasps> C'est pour moi? <gasps> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh, a chocolat chaud. Mm -hmm. You guys are so kind to spoil me like this at night. <laughs> it's a, I know it's a bizarre request. <laughs> this time of the night. Enjoy. Thank you. Oh, merci beaucoup. Um, Sante. Sour um, Sante. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm I forgot we can, 12 years old and I drink hot cocoa. We can use Swahili here too. I forget. Um, maybe not. But, you know. Well, okay. So, yeah, we went to work out early in the morning and getting up that early I was prepared to see even more monkey business around the uh, resort however I think the monkeys were sleeping in because I didn't see not one monkey <laughs> every morning that I got up I was seeing them everywhere they was like in packs they was playing around they was trying to go through people's windows in any window that was open and uh, I did not see them but I um, took a little content of the grounds again, and then I met, no, I went back to the room to uh, get her for breakfast. 
And um, uh, another, the last breakfast of the <laughs> breakfast buffet. And it was, it was on like Donkey Kong. It was good. And it was the first time that we had gotten there around that seven o'clock mark, which is right when they open. So it was empty, which was great. And everything was full. Everything was full. And in fact, like, I wish I'd taken content again for you guys of the buffet, seeing everything full and the restaurant fairly empty, but we were a bit pressed for time. We were trying to wrap up some things, um, get ourselves prepared. Uh, and also just enjoy our breakfast uh, in a bit of a hurried manner. But we got through it because we needed to get back in our room no later than 8 so that we could depart Swahili Beach at 8.30. So yeah, what what did we have? Mm. Oh, so we had to, to make it to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, after breakfast we had to um, hurry up and get to our transport because it's, they told us to leave three hours early. <laughs> to get to the airport in Mombasa. Yeah, actually and three and a half hours because our departure was noon. So yeah. they told us to leave at 8.30. And we had to tie up some loops and with the hotel. And of course we was not, we didn't leave on time, but that was cool because, you know, our driver, what was his name? Moses. Moses, oh man, Moses. he was awesome. So lovely, yeah. He yeah. took good care of us because we are extra always. So we actually had a pit stop to make, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, and he was very accommodating. Oh, I'm drinking a Virunga. Is this the one that um, this is a, Augustine um, recommended to? Or yeah. It is? Yeah. This is the one that yeah. he said? This is a Rwandan beer, I, I, I think. And? And I got the dark. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty tasty, it's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so back to yesterday. So yeah, so we had some loose ends and uh, we did not allocate for credit cards being declined for the uh, huh. additional charges that we charged to the room, i.e. all the spa treatments, etc. But we got through it. Uh, so to be fully transparent, we didn't end up departing at 8.30 like needed. We ended up departing for like as scheduled. We ended up departing at 9, but we were fine actually. I had checked us in, we had our boarding passes, so we were basically just dropping off bags. And the traffic uh, going to Mombasa airport was not bad at all, plus we made a stop. Yeah, um, it was pretty smooth, um, you know, ride. And we, <clears throat> we had to stop and pick up something from our good friend. And uh, Moses was, you know, uh, he was delighted to do, you know, you know, what, whatever we needed. And um, yeah, we got to the airport. Like, it was a smooth, it was a smooth th traffic day. It was like no hangups, no, nothing went, you know, wrong at all. And even going through the airport, like the checkpoints and all that, yeah, everyone that was, was just like, hey, welcome, have a good that's flight. That's so okay. weird. Like, the airport was smooth. <laughs> Like just getting through the airport is normally a hassle. And we got lucky. We thought we was gonna have excess baggage. Um, we thought we was gonna have to pay because it, I think it's like $300 for excess bags. Um, our bags wasn't heavy enough at all. So we didn't have to pay for that. Well, no, so what it was was we thought that because it's an intra flight, even though it's international, intra Africa, it said on their website that you have to pay for bags. If you don't get a complimentary bag, you just get a checked bag and a personal item. So we were expecting to pay for the fact that we had a checked bag, each one of us. But they didn't charge us, which was great um, for whatever reason. So I mean, we don't know our why. bags we're were like, grateful. they wasn't heavy. We, we thought it was going to be heavy because there's a weight restriction. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. We you got lucky. Maybe maybe because you know we were going to technically another country. Internationally, yeah. Yeah. So, so, but that was cool. That the flight was cool. Like you know nothing to nothing to report on the flight. Just you yeah. know we was on Kenyan Airways. Yeah, and I'll just say this: the last time we had uh, a lot of kerfuffle and. Uh, uh, just difficulty through the airports was because we were traveling in 2021. You all know what was oh, going yeah. on then. We don't need to mention it. But that whole dim situation, <laughs> we just mentioned it. That whole situation made travel that year, not just out of Kenya, out of Qatar. It was just. Yeah, things you know, are so lax now, back to normal. 
nobody's we tripping on scream. stuff. Yeah, nobody's telling you wear, wear a mask. Where's this card? Where's that bag? For all this stuff. So temperature, temperature checks. Yeah, yeah. all of that. <laughs> totally. we, listen, we don't want to recall any of that. Yeah. So I won't say never, never say never, right? So I'll just say we pray that we don't ever have to. That none of us have to ever experience anything like that again. Because mm -hmm. it was not pleasant. It really was tiresome and taxing. Yeah. So very taxing uh, and honestly it wore out you know even his son like at the time he was 13 he was very young it's already a long haul flight add in all those extra layers yeah oh my gosh and he you know had to wear all yeah. this stuff so but anyway let's Anyways, let's continue we just give on thanks. <laughs> we, yeah, give thanks. we give thanks so it was everything was smooth is what we're saying we're so yeah. grateful for that uh so so grateful and the flights weren't full so we had you know extra room between us which was lovely um, one minute um the flight from mombasa to nairobi what was that like three hours it was an hour and a half <laughs> gate to gate <laughs> but yeah it's, you see how it throws out these arbitrary was, numbers i thought it was three hours it was only an hour and a half <laughs> yes yes sir it was <laughs> okay uh yeah so did we did we have what did we do did we have seats like our own seats mm -hmm. Yeah, I had booked us, uh, like as per usual, a window and an aisle seat, and we were able to keep the middle free because it wasn't a full Yeah, flight. yeah. So the flight was cool. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing crazy on the flight happened. Um, then when we got to uh, Nairobi, so that Nairobi airport, is something else. Um, we had to, <laughs> so we we had to go out. So yeah, we was domestic, so we had to go out to the international. Um, terminal and uh, yeah it was <laughs> like it was a nice day so it was it was like and we we traveled pretty late so did we <laughs> it wasn't a nice day no it was a beautiful day but travel light I mean oh, me personally man. I had my purse I had the rollerboard which was heavy I had the whole food bag because you know I carry my own food that we carry our own food heavy then we had our suitcase which was you know almost 20 kilos between the two of us each right we each had a large rollerboard so it, it was it was it was it was tiring because we ended up having to leave the domestic terminal and basically walk over towards the uh, international terminal terminal and then restart the Oh, no, I'm sorry. We didn't have to pull our checked bag because that was checked all the yeah. way through to keep early. So we That's just, what I meant by yeah, light. Yeah, you're right. You're right our you're bags right. went straight. Yes. All the way direct. Yeah. And uh, we was, I'm, you know what? I was thinking like, we should have caught the train like we, like I had thought. But no, that would have, that, <laughs> that train was like a nine or 12 hour yeah, it's long. ride. So it would have eaten up an entire day. Yeah. And the flight. The flight from um, Nairobi to Kigali was only like 30 minutes. It was an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> gate to gate. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, it seemed you like we just... You must think that we're putting on a show for we you. We just went <laughs> up and then we was down. It's literally like this we all the time. Up, ooh, it just this, came right down. We was in not... Kigali. I promise you this is not scripted. This is exactly how it is all the time. Um, but that's a nice airport, like the international airport. Once you go up to, when we got in, after we got through the uh, customs and all that stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, security and customs. And then going past, when you go to the, uh, the early numbers, the beginning like oh, the, gates, yeah. the gates yeah when you get to the lower gates like you know three one two three you're going from 20 something all the way once you get past like gate 20 25 50, oh, no past gate 20 the airport gets nicer and nicer yeah so we're just uh, what happened there was something we went that was funny yeah, the lounge is cool. Yeah. So after the, after the process of checking in again, and again things went smoothly, right? So no no big deal. And thankfully, we, thankfully our suitcase, our large suitcase, was had been checked in all the way through. So that was wonderful. Um, we decided to go and uh, try out the new lounge. It's a new lounge, the Turkish lounge. Um, it was quite a walk, but it was worth it once we got there, and it was quiet once From we got there. Twenty five to gate three. And in fact. And oh and. They were doing construction, so 
we was like, where are we walking to? <laughs> it looked like yeah. we was walking into a warehouse. It did, it did. And they was welding stuff, it was crazy. It but, was, yeah. But it was quiet though inside the lounge itself, especially when we first arrived initially because there weren't many people there, which is why we right. attempted to do our day yeah, five recap. Yeah, y'all seen that recap where we had to yeah. stop because it was quiet and then uh, here comes a family of six and then here comes a family of eight <laughs> little kids and everything. So, um, tell but, me what you, how you felt about the food at the lounge. Oh, that food was slamming. He and said it was the so best good. lounge food he's had to date. Yeah, I, I had some food over the years and that was the best. And they had a self-serve bar. Oh. Like you didn't have, you didn't, they just had the bottles <laughs> out there. They had like a self-serve, like soft drinks, uh, water, beer, whatever you wanted. And then they had like, Another table with just <laughs> alcohol and wine and sangria and yeah, I was like, can I get just a little drink? Can I get, you know, something? She was like, oh yeah, it's right here. Like, can I get a gin and tonic? Yeah, right there. Cause service, self-serve? Okay, yeah. So I made a little drink, had some food, and I was like, okay, I should be ready to sleep on this 30 minute plane ride. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, an hour and a half. Like. Full disclosure, I actually thought it was a 13 minute flight because the departure time was 5.30 with an arrival time of 6 p.m. in Rwanda. But it turns out that there is a time difference. So Rwanda is actually one hour behind Kenya. So it wasn't five It was like two door. hours. It was 19 minutes. It was an additional hour. Like 30, yeah, three hours. <laughs> two hours and a half. How is this record edition? C'est bon. Um, so I have to say his and plate of food. And the panna cotta too. His his plate of food. I didn't eat at the lounge, but I did have a delicious mocha, by the way. So Turkish lounge Nairobi. Mm -hmm. a, a on the on the mocha it was delicious, but his plate of food I was enjoying it with my eyes. Beautiful. I don't know if it was your your choices or just what they had available, but he brought back to where we were seating. A really 100% nice. my choice. Yeah. Some basmati, like was it basmati rice? Nice, well-rounded yeah. plate of food. Some food. Yeah. Some basmati. You had food? No, 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 it's that Indian um, lentils. Oh, okay, delicious. Yeah. With the rice, it was mixed in. No, I, I put it, no, it was rice by itself mm -hmm. and the lentils. The Indian, I can't remember, mm -hmm. but you throw that, I threw that on top and some salsa. No, it was chopped tomatoes. What else did it, was on there? I saw oh, green, that like egg, the eggplant. The shukshuka? Yeah, shukshuka, green beans and carrots, mm -hmm. um, steamed. And uh, yeah, that eggplant uh, stuff. And oh, and like these tiny vegetables, samosas. Mmm, they were so cute. And Gosh, some, I miss samosa. Some tahini. I love tahini. Yeah, I drizzled a little bit on it. And then some good. Chilies. Some like chilies. It was hot, green and red. And it was red so nice that they had like a whole container of chilies, like for people, for Africans like us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who love good, you know? It was just chopped up nice, just like how I do it at home. The yeah. green, the red, <laughs> peppers nicely, finely. Uh, chopped and just you know you can scoop them up. Actually, they had them in oil, in olive oil. I think yeah, it was, which was nice. Yeah, because by that time it was mm. uh, like three. Was yeah. it three or four? Yeah. And we ate breakfast at like nine. Eight because we left at nine. Eight. Sorry, seven thirty actually because we had to be in our room well, for eight. Yeah. So yeah. So by that you know that was a while not to eat. So I was kind of hungry. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wasn't, but, so I just had the mocha, but I enjoyed looking at what he was, <laughs> what he was eating. Yeah, but the, um, the flight from, oh, we had, it was a little something weird, not weird, but something different that happened on uh, the flight from Nairobi to Kigali. It was like all these empty rows of seats and uh, we was all squished in. Oh, when we got to our seats, the whole row was filled with everybody was in the wrong seat. Like somebody was in my seat, her seat, and the middle seat. And one one person, yeah, the two, they was in the next, they were supposed to be in the next row, and this seat was filled, so these people had to get up. It was like a whole 
like a shell game. Everybody musical was in the chairs. wrong seat. Yeah, musical chairs. Um, and it was a big dude. He was supposed to be in the middle seat. Like I'm on the <laughs> I'm on the aisle. She's in the in the uh, window. So he, but he was cool. He was like, oh, I, I gotta move. I'll move. And he was like, don't you want to sit next to her? I was like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> we good. You know, we we know each other before. <laughs> we don't have to sit next to you. And then he thought I was serious. And I was like, no, I'm joking. He was like, you sure you want to? And I was like, I'm joking. Nah, we, we, we good. I need the aisle seat. He was like, okay. And then she's always breaking the rules. Like she never follows the rules. Like I was perfectly okay. <laughs> she was like, Hey, those seats are, are empty. Don't you want to move? I was like, no, I'm good. She's like, well, I'll move. She started climbing. I said, no, I'll move. So I moved behind me. It was an exit row and she moved behind that one. To another exit row. Yeah. Cause there were two. It's a, it was a Boeing 737-800, which is an aircraft that I'm actually qualified to uh, work as a cabin crew member. <laughs> so I know that there are two exit rows. Um, but I had actually offered the gentleman in the middle, I said, you know, there are two exit rows behind us with aisle seats. I said, why don't you take one of those if you wish? And I don't know if he understood me or not. He just was like, no, I got it. He was Rwandan. He was R Rwandese. So he, he, so he follows them. the rules. Oh, oh, well, that's People true, here yeah. follow the rules. Yeah, you they, probably they don't. They don't. Yeah. They don't go, you know, against yeah. the grain. Like I'm supposed to be here. This is what I'm gonna do. But he did go to the <laughs> to the window when we moved. When we moved, because when I saw that he wasn't moving, I said, "Well, there's no reason why we all need to be squished, you know, into a row of three when there are two perfectly good aisle seats available and they're in the exit row." So I said, "You know what? I'll just get up and go." And then he followed as well. Um, now I did that because. I have 10 years in the airline industry, right? Seven of seven of those years were actually cabin crew, um, so working as a flight attendant. So, but I didn't know that. It turns out, once we took those seats, that the flight attendant came to me and said, "You know, actually, these seats we charge extra for, so the people in these rows have paid extra for these rows, which is not a policy that we had uh, with with the airline that I worked for." To be fully transparent, side side story, tangent here, we tried that for about five minutes at WestJet in circa 2013. <laughs> it was just after I was hired. We tried it for five minutes, it did not go well, so we ended up. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah. I don't know what WestJet is doing these days, but so, and also, uh, if it's not in the first cabin, even if those seats cost more money, once the, uh, the, the door has been closed and you push back, no one else is boarding, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you try to get that money, that extra money when you're still selling tickets. Once you push back from the gate and you're no longer chopped, there's no additional revenue to be made from those seats, right? So it doesn't really matter. So WestJet wasn't going to be harping on, you know, exit row seats. It's actually preferable to have those exit row seats filled because in the case of an emergency, God forbid, those are the people that you're going to rely on to follow your instructions and help people out in the middle of the cabin there. So anyways, I digress. Mm -hmm. So I feel very comfortable, obviously, on aircrafts because I've, like I said, spent enough time on them <laughs> and I know what's behind the curtain, so to speak. Um, so she expressed that and I said, okay, that's not a problem, I'm so sorry. However, because like he said, a gentleman, the gentleman that was in between us had moved over to the window seat. And then the other big guy that was originally sitting in my seat mm -hmm. saw that your <coughs> aisle was open, so he moved there. So I said, but would you mind miss letting them know that we're coming back? And when she saw that, she's like, ah, forget it. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry about it, she said, just yeah. stay here. <laughs> it, was a lot of, it was a lot more moving parts again yeah. than it would have been a, yeah, people would have been not so happy to do that. But, um, but so, beyond that, it was fine though. Yeah. Fine. It was a, um, Kenya yeah. Airways, you know, solid. They even served fruit. Actually, I'm going to tell you guys this. Kenya Airways, this is to you, yeah. I think you're pushing your FAs too hard. <laughs> On a 90 minute flight, it's absolutely absurd that you expect them to do a meal service, a drink service, and duty free. I've worked uh, flights that were 90 minutes long. YYC to YVR, Calgary to Vancouver. And because you need at least 30 minutes for the descent, and it's not safe to be out in the aisleway serving at that time, I don't think you should be doing that to your cabin crew, but that's just me. At the end of the day, 
it's not a long haul flight. I get it, it's an international flight, but if safety comes first, which is what every airline professes, then you shouldn't have carts out upon descent. Uh, it's not safe. That's the most turbulent and critical time of the flight. And we all know this. Those of us that are in the industry or were in the industry already know this. So you know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, speaking of uh, duty free items, I, I saw <laughs> <Spotted> this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want some of that. I want to try that. It's Amarula mm -hmm. cream. It's some kind of cream Marilla spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's it's made from a fruit that I believe is indigenous. To indigenous, this area. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, let us know if you tried it, by the way. Yeah, it's let a classic know. cream liqueur um, infused with the exotic fruit of the African Marula tree. Get back to your roots with its iconic velvet tea smoothness and wild hints of coffee and oh toffee <laughs> oh, and, and vanilla um perfect over ice and in, in a decadent dessert a luscious cocktail or hot drink uh discover what makes amarula cream liqueurs so special so i'm gonna do my part and um support <laughs> try to get I already got back to my roots, but you know, I always keep my roots, so. Nah, but I wanna, I wanna try this. Um, so I will buy, purchase a bottle and uh, this is not tell y'all how video. it. Yeah, I'll, this I'll is not a sponsored video. It it's not sponsored. It and shouldn't. can we also say Amarula, please sponsor him. Because Amarula. he just did you, Amarula. It, it said it. He uh, just did a whole advert for you all, yeah, literally. <laughs> enjoy it around the world is what it says, so. Um, but anyway, we, um, that flight was cool and we got out and I didn't know what to expect like just coming to Rwanda um, It was about what seven o'clock or six we landed at six okay. in the evening So it was getting dark but getting off the plane you just noticed it was so calm and you could just see how clean and just put together like the airport was just getting out there was this big sign Welcome to Rwanda. You see it there, and um, then going in and out. But I was expecting the worst from like, you know, customs and all that, <clears throat> because you know a lot of countries don't play. <laughs> and uh, it was smooth. No, we just went. You know, we got to the customs agent, showed our passports. He was like, "You have a visa?" I was like, "It's in there." And you saw the the uh, all of the East African visa, and he was like, oh, how long were you here? Oh, usually it expires by the time somebody comes and try to use it. And I was like, really? Oh. That's what he said? Yeah, he didn't say it like that, but he was like, usually, like, it's, it, it expires, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, no, we, we, we haven't been here that long, so. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was smooth. Smoothest customs uh, ever. Probably, yeah. And then um, just going back to the other security check, um, that was nothing. He asked if I had a drone, and right. I was like, "No, just a, just a camera." He was like, "Okay." And well, through. Yeah. I thought they were going to go through our bags because we watched, excuse me, a vlog where um, a man explained to us that like plastic bags are illegal, and so we had removed all of our stuff um, that was in plastic bags, i.e., Ziploc bags. You know, we put a lot of our toiletries in Ziploc bags or um, plastic bags that we use for shoes, etc. So all of that we had to uh, remove and undo our last night at Swahili Village, thinking that if, if we didn't, they were going to make us do it at the airport. And so yeah. we were trying to mitigate that situation. Nothing. They didn't so ask we, us about plastic, nothing. Yeah, they didn't check. And they, we got we put all it these- a scanner. But, yeah, we got, I got rid of all the plastic bags. I, yeah. I usually just put my shoes in there. And um, uh, we, I was collecting all the paper uh, that, bags that mesh did. bags that they give you at stores, and um, not didn't really even need it. But it was cool. I didn't want to bring, you know. I guess they they control the plastic. Like mm -hmm. you can't bring it from outside, but if they have it, you know. Yeah. So that's cool. You and know. That's, thank you for clarifying that point because yeah. there is plastic in the country. 
Yeah. So in the form of plastic bottles, uh, even at where we're staying in Kigali, they using they're using a liner made out of plastic. So there is plastic, like he said, that's very good. <clears throat> yeah, like he said, it's it's kind of like they control it, and that's fine. Um, so it's not as stringent. To be honest with you, we heard a lot of. Um, we heard that it was a little bit more militant than, than how we have found it to yeah. be, in my experience. Yeah. We've only been here like 26 hours or so. Like, I know we've not been here long, but we've done loads in this time. And I've not seen it be nearly as uh, strict and as militant. I mean, everything functions really well here. So I'm not saying that um, they're being lax. It's just, it's not as, um, it's not as, uh, Intimidating as I thought it would be. Yeah. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Actually, if out of a ten, I thought the intimidation level would be like maybe a nine or ten. We're maybe sitting comfortably at a two three. Yeah. It's been really was, lovely. Yeah, I was I was expecting to get grilled, searched, inspected, everything. Yeah. I was I was expecting the bags to be gone through, but they did a really like the service here is really smooth and, and, and cool. And we're in the countryside now, we're by the Lake, Lake Kivu actually. Um, we passed tons of military, no stops, no checkpoints. Military that we came across today, even in the excursion that we were at. Or yeah. if I, oh, but we don't want to cover today. Yeah. I'll just going say that. To another yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll just say that so far, our first day in a bit here, it's a lot more relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. Than, than I feel like people made it out to be online. Yeah. Our experience has been there anyways. Yeah. So we got our we got our luggage, everything came through. And then I was going to look for money because I wanna have the cash in my hand to tip people. And yeah, man, we, we came. And thanks to Haben and she is so like nice. Family. Uh man, it it must be like Every olive train people that I know and, and have met, like that's 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 them. So nice, kind, just giving, loving. She she didn't have to pick us up from the airport. Like we have not we, we have not met face to face, only online and through you know video call, but. She offered to pick us up from the airport. She took time. Like, she took time away from her family. Yeah. To come to the airport. She waited for us. She took us to our hotel and then had to go home. You know, that's at least a couple of hours out of her evening, which she could yeah. be using. And it was busy that night too. Time. <laughs> she could be using it to rest, to work on her own <clears throat> things, but she she gave that to us so that was you know that's the greatest thing that you can give to people is your time right and her and your attention and she did that so we're so so grateful and she has a very demanding um career and she also runs her own shop mm -hmm. um and stay she, tuned yeah and uh we found out that uh some air trans are some heavy hitters out here in rwanda i was like whoa like what she's like yeah it's it, this this uh Eritrean businessman he owns this 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 and he puts all these people to uh you know he employs a lot of um, local people as as well as Eritreans here like heavy hitters is that the guy that owns the uh the grocery Simba. yeah Simba as a matter of fact he owns like, a uh, <clears throat> grocery store chain <laughs> everyone that um have come across it that uh, knows that I'm Eritrean since coming here. I said, "Oh, the wealthiest man in Rwanda is Eritrean." It literally started with the guy who was sitting next to me. Um, he was in the window seat on the exit row on the second leg, the portion that was from Nairobi to Kigali. Towards the end of the flight, he said, "Where are you from?" And I said, "No." He said to me, "Are you Eritrean?" And I said, "Yes." Are you sure you're Eritrean? I said, "Yes, sir. I'm Eritrean." You from Eritrea, sir? Yes, I'm from Eritrea. Wow, Eritrea, good people. The richest man in the whole of Rwanda is Eritrean. And he's friends with everybody. He employs people. He gets on with everybody. The richest, top, number one, Eritrean. Good people. I thought, wow, thank you. And it's kind of been echoed by some other people as well that, um, yeah, Eritreans are, are um, 
well to do here. Well immersed. They are like well accepted into just, this. Yeah. Just hit the ground running. Yeah. <laughs> just like you know, upwardly mobile, mm -hmm. not just sitting here doing nothing. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know, but that's what you know. That's what I hear. I hear everybody's doing big things over here. You know. And when you have the uh, opportunity, you, you take it. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So. Exactly. So then having collected us, the sweet person that she is, thank you so much, Hafte. Um, she told us a little bit about the city as she was driving us to our hotel. And then, you know, we had an early start uh, today. So we said our goodbyes. We had invited her to come in for a drink, whatever, but she uh, was gracious and went back to her family and uh, Isha and I um, went to check into our room and settle in, which uh, we ended needing all of that time actually because we were kind of re reworking our bags. Today was full on and yada yada yada. Um, it was quite. It was quite a day. It was quite a day. There were a couple of pickups by the time we got to the Sheraton, but nothing, nothing big. And you'll get more of that in the review for the yeah. Sheraton. But the Sheraton, um, I was like, you know, I, all the Sheratons I've been to are not are not that. Uh, <laughs> they're not five star. Um, the ones I've been to are pretty between Basically. three and four. Yeah. Really um, nice. The name is outweighs, the name carries, but when you actually stay there, you're like, this thing is, is good. But this Sheraton, I was like, I'm impressed. I was impressed, but because um, I was going to, I had booked the Hilton and then no, Some, the Marriott. The Ma yeah, Marriott. Like the Marriott, which is right across the street. To be fair, they're all yeah, the same area. Yeah, but um, I forgot what happened. Oh, we had to change. I had to change the date. I had to change the date. So um, the share. Then they didn't have space once I canceled it. So anyway, we got in the uh, Sheraton, and it's it's nice. Uh, people are nice. Staff is mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. um, we done with this. I think we're finished with this recap, guys. We're Thank finished. you so much. <laughs> we gotta go to bed. We gotta go, yeah. All right, y'all. Peace, and uh, we'll see you on the next recap. Bye.